So hello and good afternoon. This is Rutpasolo from Curval.com and today we're going to talk about storage modes, the feature that was introduced July 2018. Okay, so let's do it. Chit-chat at the end. Okay, so let's talk about the storage models. Um, first of all, this is a preview feature. So you have to go here, file, options, options, and set it up, composite models. Make sure you do that. Otherwise you won't be able to do any of these, okay? So I am using the same model I use for the composite models video that it was on Tuesday. So I'll post the link below, make sure you check it out. But very, very quickly, there are two tables. One is direct query, the other one is import from a CSV file. There is a cool thing now, if you hover over the tables, this is really good because you have no idea how many times I've gone to Power Query to see where did I imported that stuff from. So. Now you can see that this is daily subs, this is a direct query from SQL database, and this is an imported table. Okay, great. So what are these storage models? The first thing you need to do to be able to access them is you go in here. Oh, because I have the field properties open, you have to right click and properties. Okay. And then you will find that there are three storage models available for you now. You have import, you have direct query, which you had before, and then you have dual. So import, it means that the data is imported into Power BI and the tables are cached. So they are stored in memory. Direct query, it means that the tables are not stored in memory, but to be able to use the report, you need to be able to connect to your data source. So it goes back to your source, to your SQL, makes the query there and then brings you back the results. Okay. So now there is a new storage mode, which is a dual mode. And this is basically what they have released this time. What, except for the fact that you can combine import and direct query, but this is part of the composite models. Okay. So doing tables can be either cache or not cache. So it can be stored in uh, memory or not, depending on the Power BI data set. Okay. Sometimes it will be cache, other times it will be executed on demand back to the source. Okay. Now changing a table from a direct query to import is an irreversible operation, irreversible, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can trick it. But I mean, you cannot just here go back and forth and change it. It's not allowed. Okay. So once you change something to import, it stays import, but you can switch something to dual and then switch it back to that query without any problems whatsoever. Okay. So that is quite good to know. Another thing that is important to say is that dual tables have the same restrictions as direct query tables. Okay. And I have a video talking about um, direct query and the implications of that, I'm going to link that below so you can access it and see everything, but you have a lot of restrictions when you're using the aquarium. Okay. And here's the thing, because a table can either, you know, in dual mode can either, and is this what it says? Let's go here in daily subs and change this to dual. And this is what it says. It says setting the storage model to dual has the following implications. The operation will reflect the tables and it will depend on how much volume you have, uh, that it will have a factor uh, and it will be a factor on performance. So what he's telling us here is that 
when you have when you set a table to dual, it could either again cache everything in memory or go back to the source and refresh. If it goes back to the source and refresh, it means that it's doing it direct query mode, and that's why you have the direct query restrictions to it. Okay, so Power BI will decide which way to go. And for that reason, it needs to be able to have the direct query restrictions. So another thing that is telling you here is that when you set a table in dual mode, it needs refresh. Direct query does not need refresh. Dual mode does. Okay. So when I set this to dual, it will refresh if it decided to cache, to store this thing, the table in memory. So now, <laughs> grab a cup of coffee. This is going to get hairy. When we are, you know, making relationships between tables, depending on the mode of each table, you will be able to have a one-to-many relationship or it will force you to a many-to-many -many relationship. So I am a visual person, so for me, it helps to visualize things. So if we have a table on the many relationship that is imported and the table on the one relationship is also imported, then you can have one to many relationships. Okay. If it's dual and dual, you can also have, and if it's direct query and direct query, you can also have. Now, if it is imported on the many, and do all on the one, it works. And if it is direct query on the many and do all on the one, also it works. But on the other cases, it has to be a many to many relationship. And we've talked about what many to many relationship, the implications it has. So watch that video, okay? But this is what you need to remember. So when they are the same type, you are okay. And when they are not, it will only work with imported and direct query when the one is dual. So this is the one, and that is the one you need to remember. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to Power BI and I'll show you. So these are our tables in Power BI. And what we have here is a import table on the many side, and we have dual on the, no, sorry, 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 my bad. We have import on the one side. These are unique values and we have dual on the many side. Okay, so on the many side, if you remember my table, we have dual here and it only worked if you had dual there. That was the only possibility you had, if you remember my diagram. Let me clear that and show you here. Again, so dual with dual. Okay, so that's why it doesn't allow us to create a any other relationship that is not many to many. Okay, so that's the only thing that is allowed. Let's add another table. We go up here. I have a few tables prepared. Let's load this one. Enable load, close. And this is now. So this is direct query. No, 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 no. Let's do it like that. First of all, the first thing we'd want to do is join these tables together, which it will be like that. And let's see what we have here. We have um, video stats. This is direct query. I'll show you in a second. This is imported and this is dual. And where are the relationships? This is one. This is many and this is many. Okay, so we have direct query from the many side. We have direct query. It only allowed 
relationships one to many when it was direct query here, right? And this is important, so it will not allow us to have one to many. Let's go back. Let's delete this. First, let me show you. Uh, there you have it. Video stats. This is direct query. You can click on it also. Daily subs is dual and country codes is import. Okay. So as we saw previously on my table, direct query with direct query um, is the only thing that is uh, allowed or dual but not imported. Okay. So, um, now we know that. So to continue explaining about this dual storage mode, uh, Microsoft has a great example on their documentation and they are using this table. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you, this is quite interesting. So what they say is, okay, imagine that you have this model and you have set a date as a dual table, customer as dual, and geographical duo. The reason why you would do that is because these tables do not change that much. You normally use it in filters, in slicers, and you would like the slicers to be very responsive, not wait to go back to the model to pick up some query, you know, to, to find the data. So it will make sense to make those as a, um, a dual storage. Let's say that, you know, our sales table, we want to have indirect query. And the reason we want to have it in direct query is because it's a huge table um, and uh, for performance reasons, it just makes sense to have sales table uh, as direct query. And then we have the um, survey response, which is imported because I don't know, it could be it comes from a web source or a CSV or, you know, imported data. And uh, so this is the scenario that they present us. They say, okay, now imagine that you want the customer table to be imported instead of being dual. And here's the thing. It, will not allowed to do that due to the relationships because we have a many to one relationship. And if you remember from our table, this is the way that relationships were allowed. We had like that and like that. Okay. So we have, this is direct query is down here. And then we have import here and that is not allowed. So you only have that one and that one allowed. So it will not allow to say that, to do that. If you want to change the customer table to direct query, so it will be from import to direct query, not allowed. Okay. So the only thing that oh, the only ones that are allowed are these ones. So I just remember like like that. I don't know if it makes any sense with you guys, but the other ones are like blanks. Um, so you can the only possibility for you is to have these as dual. Okay. So when you are designing your model, you need to have this diagram into consideration as to make sure that you have one to many relationships everywhere, avoid many to many, check out that video. Um, and that would limit it on where you can have a dual direct query on import table. Okay. So when we talk about dual, we said that it either catches the data as a source in memory, or it just goes back to the source and um, makes the query there to know if it is uh, stored in memory or not. Just connect your SQL profiler and check that. You have more information in the Microsoft documentation. I'll post the link down below so you can go and check. Um, 
storage mode works only with composite models um, or is correlated with composite models. You know, they, they hang together. Let me show you that. Um, we go there, we go here. This is, uh, the sources are all imported, right? Everything is imported, as you can see. So what is this storage mode here? If you go to properties, you will see there is import. And as we mentioned before, if you have import, you cannot have any other mode. That's why storage modes are related to composite models, okay? And uh, there were limitations on composite models. I told you about that on the correlation co composite models video. And those are that there are some multidimensional sources that cannot be used with composite models, which is SAP HANA, SAP Business Warehouse, Analysis Services, and Power BI datasets. Okay. So when you are connecting to those sources, you cannot combine with imported data, at least not yet. Okay, so <laughs> we've covered everything. My God, I thought this is, was going to be a short video and it's proven to be gigantic, but I really hope that gives you a, like a deep down into the stories model and allows you to understand what those things are and how to use them. Okay, so what do you think? Storage modes. That's quite interesting concept, actually. Um, I hope that this video makes it clear what it does and how you use them. Let me know if you have any additional questions. Um, I actually thought that I would combine storage modes with other features that they have released, but the video is too long, so there's no way I can put in anything else in there. I would like to talk about actually theming and the new um, data category. But I will have to do that next week because there's no way I can add it here. But anyhow, I really hope you enjoy the video. Um, today is, no, tomorrow <laughs> is Friday, Dax Fridays, don't miss it. And um, see you tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this power week. Bye.